Yes, welcome back to the second hour of the Power Hour. This is Tuesday, May 19th. Thank you for joining us in the Power Hour today. And I just figured out why they don't have Bob Chapman on the Fox Financial News. He doesn't wear a short enough skirt and show cleavage. That's the reason they don't have Bob Chapman on. I mean, that's like a must on Fox Info News. Have you seen that? I mean, their financial news uh, uh, channel, they've all got cleavage and short skirts and blonde hair. Well, anyway, we're talking to a man who doesn't need all that because he's got brains. And he also was in Wall Street many, many years. He's been talking about and studying financial matters for 50 years. He does a newsletter called TheInternationalForecaster.com. And we thank him very much for joining us. We've missed him the last couple of weeks. Thank you, Bob, for joining us in the Power Hour today. Well, thank you for having me again. And uh, I've been a busy beaver. Uh, mm-hmm. I was on Fox radio stations in many of their markets, really the larger markets, uh, over the last few weeks, and uh, uh, I devoted most of my time on the air to explaining the Federal Reserve and why we should be passing Ron Paul's uh, bill, which is the HR 1207, to audit the Federal Reserve. It's called the Federal Reserve Transparency Act of 2009. When I started, there were 120 co um, endorses, we'll call them, uh, and there's now 183. Whoa, that and, is uh, that, that's outstanding. Oh, that is incredible and, news. But wait a minute, that's not the punchline. The punchline is Fox told me I couldn't talk about that anymore. Hmm? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. At HR 1207, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not heard about it, it is basically called Audit the Federal Reserve Bill. Uh, the Federal Reserve Transparency Act of 2009, I was, I was aware of the 120 supporters in the Congress for this, but now you say there's 180. Now, how did this take place when you were on Fox Radio and they said, that's uh, verboten, you cannot talk about that subject? Well, it sort of came through like um, we don't want any more programs like that one. We want them on. In fact, they accredited me to go on television. And uh, I said I wasn't interested. Oh, really? You know, my, yeah, well, I'm in another country, and I don't want to go travel to uh, a studio to do, you know, 10 or 15 minutes on a TV program or a half hour or whatever it is. And so I said, look, I'll, I'll stick to the airways. But they did say they didn't want to discuss that anymore. Okay, now tell me, okay, why, first of all, on Fox Radio, which has, you know, a gazillion channels around the country, but what, how, did, what, how did they couch it that they wanted you to come on the program in the first place? Well, they went through somebody else. And they said, we like having them on, but we don't want them to talk about that. It's just we don't want to. And that's not official, of course. Well, did you say, why can't I talk about it? No, no. They had arbitrarily made the decision up. And there's more ways I can get around that. Because when you talk about business and finance, uh, you always go back to the core, to the nucleus of the problem. And that's the Fed Reserve. So no matter which way they go on it, if someone says to me, well, who started all this? How did this dreadful situation in finance and economics happen in America? I said, well, the, the, the group that's, uh, that's responsible for this is the privately owned Federal Reserve. Mm-hmm. And so they can't get away from it. Well, good. It's just I, I... That they don't want the devotion of uh, 15 minutes here and an hour there on different programs. They don't want it talked about in detail because I come up with all the gruesome facts of all the naughty things that they're doing. They don't want the truth about it then. They don't want the truth. Okay, now let's go back to the subject of um, of uh, what you were asked to talk about. What did they? Why did they bring you on? How did they? Did they just say we want Bob Chapman on because he has a newsletter, or what did they say? No, um, uh, Ted Anderson arranged through special guests that I would go on them uh, their, their stations, and uh, also uh, there was another uh, an, a number of other programs that I, uh, I was on and continue to be on uh, that I had never been on before that had nothing to do with Fox. It was ABC and CBS, not too many of them. And um, uh, and then a number of programs I'd never heard of before, which turned out very, very well. Well, wonderful. What did you talk about? What did you say? 
I talked about the Fed. I talked about cap and trade. Uh, I talked about the uh, bankruptcy of Chrysler and the pending probable bankruptcy of General Motors. And those are probably the main items. I see that in cap and trade they're trying to fast track it through and uh, I don't know that they're going to get away with it. It's a disaster. If you read in, in the, uh, it was either the last or the next to last issue of the International Forecaster, uh, I had a, uh, a piece in there about the experience of the leader in uh, this green development, you'll call it. And um, uh, they say that it was, it was disastrous for them. Uh, only 10% of the green jobs created stuck. And it led to the, uh, the unemployment of millions of people. So Spain, in the vanguard, said, don't do that, and we're not going to do it anymore. And so Obama is saying it was successful, and we're going to do it. And that's why they're fast-tracking it. And, of course, the reason they really want it is to put taxes on the American people. Well, let's go back and recap some of the things that have taken place since you were on the program the last time. We talked about GM and Chrysler. I mean, the devastating uh, closing of some uh, 2,500 between GM and Chrysler dealerships around the country is just... uh, it's going to be destructive beyond what we even can imagine right now because as of June 9th when they all close down, that's going to be probably on average of 50 people per dealership that's going to be out of business. So if we say there's 2,500 dealerships times 50, I mean, that's a whole lot of lives that are going to be affected. Well, it's not only that. It's all the people who do business with them as well, the caterer who comes with coffee and donuts and, and the people who supply them with paper and computers and on and on. Uh, the fallout is going to be large, but have no fear. Um, you know they're going to be producing automobiles, and uh, they get two plants in India. GM has, and uh, they have plants in China. Of course, this planning started in 1980, and uh, then they have the the best, most modern plant in the world in Brazil. So uh, we're giving all our jobs away uh, to foreign countries, and that's why we desperately need tariffs on goods and services. And if we can get that and we can get rid of the Fed, we have a shot at coming out of this thing. If we don't get the two of them, I cringe to think what's going to happen. Well, how is that going to help the United States, though, if they're selling vehicles in India and Brazil? Uh, Because if you pass tariffs, what will happen is you produce a vehicle for $16,000 in Brazil. And the vehicle is shipped to the United States. But the same vehicle produced in America, or were it to be produced in America, would cost $20,000. Yeah, but you say it's a hard cost. So what happens is that there would be a $4,000 tariff on each car coming in from Brazil of that type. And that money would go to the federal government, which in turn would use it to reduce their deficit or to pay off some of their debt. Okay, but you say if they pass tariffs. I don't know that they're going to do that and what that's going to you mean that's a that's a giant that's a an if the size of the Grand Canyon though, Bob. Well, I'll tell you, uh there are countries right now who are putting tariffs on. Uh China, Russia, and now Canada. Uh the city of Toronto, which is four or five million people, have just said that in this stimulus package only American-produced goods can be used, and some goods from Canada were not used in something that was being built. And um, Canada says, well, we're not going to use any more products in the city of Toronto, which is Ontario in Canada, which is just across the border from Michigan. And so it's begun, and it's going to spread. And what's going to happen eventually, I think, that in desperation that other nations will continue to add tra- tariffs, the U.S. will be forced to. I mean, they can't compete now. Well, no. I mean, but, you know, we're talking about 125,000 people that are going to be out of business here in the United States. They're going to be the out fallout, of jobs. The fallout will be four or 500,000. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 
mere half a million people. What's that to add to our already packed unemployment halls, uh, people trying to get compensation? So then, you know, they get the money, and they need more money. The printing presses start again. Uh, California's going bankrupt. They need more money. Everybody's needing more money. And the story that Obama just said on Saturday on C-SPAN on Saturday on a holiday weekend. Oh, by the way, we're out of money.